I wanted to take a few minutes today on my morning ride to discuss my luggage system for my folding bicycle tour. I leave in two days and I wanted this video to really go over the equipment that I'm carrying on the bike with me, how I'll be fixing the bike if it breaks, the clothes I'll be wearing, how I'll be cooking my food, uh, and everything else I'm bringing with me that's not the bike. I figured first I should have a word about sort of the purpose of my system. I really tend to go on trips like this with as lightweight and as minimalist equipment as I can. Uh, so this is a system designed first and foremost to meet all of my needs and provide me with comfort whilst carrying the least amount of weight and bringing the smallest individual number of things. In addition to that, I also really wanted this tour to be fairly low-key and stealthy. Uh, that tends to make traveling in tourist areas a little bit easier. I wanted to look a lot more like a person heading home from work with a bag of groceries and a lot less like an American tourist traveling through a small farm village to achieve this goal, I wanted my bags to look fairly standard, a grocery bag more or less on the front of the bike, and then a backpack more or less on the back rack of the bike. This will mean that I'm avoiding standard bicycle touring bags like handlebar bags and panniers. My bike racks are a lot more utility oriented for the everyday cyclist and they're not really bicycle touring racks. My camping equipment is all very small, lightweight, and most importantly low profile, which should of course make stealth camping a lot easier for me as I travel along. Although, even when I'm not planning on stealth camping periodically, I try to avoid incredibly high-vis tents, sleeping bags, and that sort of equipment. I just find them somewhat disruptive to the overall natural vibe. All that being said, let's head over to my kitchen counter for a little bit more of an in-depth examination of the equipment I'll be bringing with me, the bags I'll be using to carry it with, and the clothes I'll be bringing as well. Okay, starting out with the front bag in the two-bag system, this is just a waterproof cover. It snaps off on the back. Uh, this is a waterproof cover for a small backpack. I've had it for several years now and not used it for anything else. And that's just over a reusable shopping bag. Inside of my front bag, I'll mainly be keeping my food and extra water. Uh, in addition to that, I'll have my cook kit and whatever stove fuel I'm using at the moment. I carry both a propane stove and an alcohol stove, so whichever one of those I can get at the time is what I'll be using. Uh, my cook kit content looks like this. Uh, in there, I keep my plate, bowl, pot, pan combination. These are Snow Peak Ultralight Titanium uh, cookware. One is a bowl, one is a plate. Uh, those work as my pot, my lid, my cup, my frying pan, my bowl, my plate, and pretty much everything else I need. These are quite lightweight and not really designed for cooking in. The, uh, the titanium is very thin. You can bend it with your hands. Uh, to prevent scorching on the bottom, I'm carrying a round piece of stainless steel cut from the bottom of a stainless steel plate I got at a thrift store. That will go between the pot or pan and whatever I'm cooking with, the stove, uh, that I'm cooking with, uh, and that will prevent me from scorching the bottom of the food that I'm cooking in there. I also have myself a folding cutting board that I can fold out much like so, chop an onion on there, whatever I need to cut. I also have a long-handled titanium spoon, which is really the only thing I'm bringing cookware-wise, an MSR pot gripper that allows me to grip these whenever they're quite hot, uh, good for frying and boiling of things. Uh, my 
propane stove is in this small container along with my lighter. Uh, this is just a folding titanium BRS stove. Uh, they're quite cheap and extremely lightweight. As you can see, they're tiny. Uh, and my alcohol stove is a Super Cat stove. The only other thing in there is just a tiny little pot scrubber. This is just a little tiny green sponge cut out of a regular one that will help me scrub everything down in between cooking tasks. Uh, and all that goes on the front of the bike. Now I'll go over the second bag. This Gecko Brands waterproof roll top backpack uh, is the main bag I'll be taking on the trip. At the moment, it's cinched down just about as small as it reasonably goes. Uh, it is a 30 liter bag, but will handily carry pretty much everything else I need to bring on the trip with me. Uh, inside here is my tent, sleeping bag, extra clothes, all of those sorts of things. Uh, we can go over that right now. All right. First, we have my big three. Uh, that's my sleeping bag, my shelter, and my sleeping pad. That makes up the main weight of my equipment. Uh, firstly, we have the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite sleeping pad. Uh, this one is the woman's, so it's a little bit shorter and a little bit more insulated than the men's. It's also a little bit cheaper, funnily enough. I've been using this pad for some years now, and it works quite nicely. In addition to that, we have the Lanshan Pro, which is a monopole tent, works with a trekking pole, the same trekking pole that I'm using as a kickstand for the bike. Uh, this one I've modified somewhat substantially, replacing all the high-vis cord with low-vis cord uh, and setting it up to be speed deployed. Uh, if there's any questions about that, I'll go over those, but uh, otherwise it's just a very small, lightweight tent that sets up very quickly and is this super dark brown color. Good to blend into backgrounds as I set up. Uh, my sleeping bag formerly was a LaFuma Active, just a active insulation 45 degree mummy bag, uh, which I've since turned into a top quilt just by cutting out the zipper and a few extra inches around the uh, the bag, adding some Velcro at the top. Uh, that will cover me over and act like a blanket with a foot box, uh, but the, uh, the bag is very lightweight and quite warm. I've had this bag down to about 38 degrees with all my clothes, so it should be plenty warm enough for this trip. In addition to those items, I have my rain suit, uh, this is my Frog Togs Ultralight Green Rain Suit. Uh, this is the second one of these that I've ever purchased. Uh, they're lightweight, they're quite waterproof, uh, and they work very well as a cycling rain suit. Uh, I recommend them, and they're quite reasonably priced, which is nice as well. I also have my electronics for the trip. Uh, I have a large battery bank by Hypergear. Uh, one of these charges my phone four or five times. I find that having a big battery bank on a cycling tour is a great way to s not spend a lot of money sitting around in cafes waiting for your phone to charge. Uh, I also have several charging cables. Uh, I have a wall charger in here, which of course I will have to switch out to a Euro standard wall charger whenever I get there. And I also have a tiny drive that contains all of my audiobooks and regular books uh, and just all my general entertainment type stuff. It's really very small, so I'm justifying carrying it on this trip for the first time. I also have my prescription sunglasses. Those normally go into this pocket on the outside of the bag to give me nice quick access to them on sunny days. Otherwise, I have my everything else bag right here. Uh, this is just a little cosmetics bag and inside of it, I keep everything else. Uh, that includes all of my tools for repair for the bike. Uh, I have a, let's see, that's a Crank Brothers M17 multi-tool. Uh, I've used this for several years now. It works quite nicely as far as a bicycle multi-tool is concerned. I normally carry a Leatherman with that, though I've swapped that out to this much smaller multi-tool for this trip. This is an Octical or, yeah, Octal 
P1. I don't have a lot of experience with this yet. It was, you know, a $17 Amazon find. I mostly needed this because it has an extremely small knife, which makes it relatively legal in all of the places of Europe that I'll be traveling. It's also got a can opener and bottle opener and pliers, which are pretty important for bicycle maintenance. Uh, these are just big enough as pliers to fit around my quick link uh, to undo and redo my quick link, which is important. Uh, in addition to that on here, I've got an SD card removal tool, which is pretty important for European travel. Uh, I've also got some tiny scissors, a couple of screwdrivers, and an eyeglasses screwdriver that I've tucked in underneath here, uh, which will make this a fairly good multi-tool. I'm also carrying a patch kit with vulcanizing patches, non-vulcanizing patches, uh, vulcanizing fluid, super glue, several extra quick links. I keep those in this little box because if you don't, the uh, the little containers that the fluid is in, they tend to get uh, bent back and forth. That will make them weaken and then they'll burst in your bag. So keep them in the little box. I also have some fabric paint or just a fabric paint bottle in this case filled with chain lube. I use NYX Friction and this will be plenty enough to last me the entire trip. Uh, I'll keep my chain clean and well oiled with this. I also have a Pedro's tire lever. This will help me uh, patch any flats that I happen to have. You only need one, especially if it's a Pedro's. Uh, I also have a supplemental bike lock. This is a master combo lock with a few uh, spring sort of shaped steel braided cables coated in PVC plastic. Uh, these are the sort of locks that you would normally use to lock like your motorcycle helmet to your motorcycle. Uh, I'll probably get a larger lock whenever I'm in Europe, uh, and then I'll use these little bungee cords to go between my front wheel or to lock my bag to the bike. Uh, so these are really a supplemental lock. However, my bike will also have a motion-activated alarm on it, uh, which will keep people from digging through my bags. In addition, I have several hygiene items, soap, a little scrubby, I've got some deodorant in there, and my uh, my small portable shower will also go in here. Uh, I also have a small battery-powered wall beard trimmer, which will help me stay a little bit more clean on this trip than I'm normally used to. Uh, and I also have something that a lot of long-distance travelers will be familiar with. This is my everything else catch-all bag that I've developed over several years of travel. In there, I keep my toothbrush, my toothpaste, my first aid kit, my patch kit. I've got a tick key in there, some earplugs, a nail file, painkillers. Uh, this little bag I've been building up for several years now. It's got all those extra little bits and bobs that I wish that I had whenever I go somewhere. And I put them all into this plastic bag coated in tape, uh, either on the trip after I buy them or afterwards whenever I get home. Uh, this thing's quite small and serves many different functions. Uh, a full first aid and patch kit is usually quite large, but this one is relatively minuscule. In addition to all of these things, I have my extra bag of clothes. My stuff sack for my clothes bag is a, uh, a Noceum Nash head net. I've been using this for my clothes bag for many years. It's nice to have that Noceum Nesh metting. Uh, this, my sleeping bag, and my sleeping bag pad will be inside of a trash bag inside of this roll top bag. So my clothes don't need to be in a separate dry bag. Also having them in this large expandable bag means that they can squish down and conform to the shape in the inside of the bag. That means that I can pack them smaller uh, than I would do if they were in a fitting stuff sack. I'll go over all this now. Inside of here, I have my merino wool buff and a warm fleece hat. I've got a pair of Cuddle Duds thermolytic leggings. Good to keep me warm at night while I'm sleeping. I've got a Mountain Hardware, I believe Ghost Whisperer down jacket. These are very light. I have a Patagonia Capoline fleece top, which are quite warm. This is the same one that I wore on the Appalachian Trail, and after using it for several years, I can honestly say it's plenty warm for this trip. I've got a full-size backpacker's uh, microcloth towel. 
uh, handy for drying off and drying off the inside of my shelter at night. Uh, single wall shelters tend to build up condensation. In addition to that, some ex officio boxer briefs, some darn tough socks, and some Njinji socks. And that really makes up the balance of my clothes, the extra clothes I'm bringing for the trip. Uh, if I need additional clothes, an extra large coat, an extra t-shirt, I'll just pick that up in country. In fact, I really like picking up clothes on trips like this and bringing them back home and using them as sort of a souvenir. Of course, all of this is supplementing the clothes that I will be wearing on the plane over and wearing as I ride the bike, and we can go over that now too. For this trip, I've selected an REI folding baseball cap to fit underneath a bike helmet. I'm not sure if I'm bringing a bike helmet or if I'm buying one in country. Uh, we'll just have to see what fits in the suitcase. I'm also bringing a woolly merino wool dress shirt. Uh, this is a quite nice eBay find. It's Kind of heavy, a little bit warm, uh, but whenever I get to Amsterdam, the standard uh, daily high is 60 and low of 50. So this will be quite nice for that. Uh, I also have a Icebreakers Merino Wool t-shirt in black. Merino Wool is, of course, famous for not holding body odor, so these will help me do laundry a little bit less. And then in addition to that, I have a dark-colored pair of zip-off quick-drying nylon hiking pants from North Face. Uh, I've worn these on a few trips now, uh, and aside from the fact that the bottom of the legs are a little bit wide for your uh, bike packing usage, uh, they work quite nicely and they do dry very quickly. I also find that the dark, more muted color of them really helps me blend into standard city life. Uh, in addition to this, I also have the hidden third bag of the two-bag system, which we can talk about right now. Here we have my Nittany Mountain Works crossbody. Uh, as you can see, this is a very colorful, somewhat sizable crossbody. Uh, they're locally produced. If you're thinking about getting a Nittany Mountain Works product, I do highly recommend it. Uh, this bag will help me keep different items from my equipment that you've just seen on my body as I go about places. If I'm staying in a hotel room or a hostel and I leave for the day to go to a museum, this bag will probably come with me. Uh, my passport will almost always live in here. I'm keeping a rear bike light on there as well most of the time. Uh, my riding gloves are in here. I just use a pair of mechanics gloves. These last vastly longer than your normal riding gloves, though you have to do without the padding. I've also got my Nikkor uh, NU25. This is one of the new ones, headlamp. Uh, while this is a little bit bright for backpacking, I find it pretty great for riding a bike at night in emergencies. So it's got a nice bright white setting and a nice red setting for moving around in the woods at night. In addition to that, I really just have my bicycle pump. Uh, this one is quite nice in that it unfolds to be a full floor pump with a air pressure gauge on the end of it. That is quite handy. I've been using this one for a full couple of years now as well and it works nicely. Uh, I've also got a Euro Silcock key in there. Uh, this will help me turn on industrial water sources out in the countryside just in case I find myself caught out without any water. This is just a tiny little thing, certainly worth carrying. And that's really all I have. Those are the three bags of my two bag system. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions for more kit, I probably won't be able to do anything about more kit because I'm leaving in just two days, uh, but let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day and uh, enjoy the ride out there. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of my trip to Europe.